Friends, we've come together today to share with Matt and Victoria a most important moment in their lives. With our presence here today, we've joined God as witnesses to the sacred union of marriage. Marriage was instituted by God in the Garden of Eden when he saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Christ himself beautified marriage with his presence in Cana of Galilee when he performed his first miracle. Marriage is commended by the Apostle Paul, who explained that it pictures the holy union that exists between Christ and his church, in which our Lord Jesus is called the bridegroom and his church the bride. So today is both a joyful, serious, and spiritually significant occasion, which should be entered into with godly reflection, wise counsel, and joyful desire. Matt. Do you take this woman before you in the marriage covenant, understanding the weight of your confession and promise, acknowledging the covenant's significance as it promotes and demonstrates the gospel, cleaving and uniting to this woman without separation according to God's ordinance, loving, serving, and leading her as Christ does for his bride, the church, in kindness, forgiving her as God does for you, keeping yourself for her as long as you both shall live. 
I do. Victoria, do you take this man before you in the marriage covenant, understanding the weight of your confession and promise, acknowledging the covenant's significance as it promotes and demonstrates the gospel, cleaving and uniting to this man without separation according to God's ordinance, respecting, helping, and submitting to him as Christ's bride, the church, does to him, in kindness, forgiving him as God does for you, keeping yourself for him as long as you both shall live. I do. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> you can remain standing as we sing together what is our hope in life and death. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence? That our souls to Him belong. Who holds our days within His hand? What comes upon? will keep us to the end the love of Christ on which we stand oh sing hallelujah our hope springs eternal love sing truth can calm the troubled soul. God is good. God is good. Where is his grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above Since the ways that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal love, sing the grave what will we sing Christ he lives Christ he lives and what reward will heaven bring everlasting life with him then we will rise to meet the Lord and sin and death is ours forevermore. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal love. Sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ
I want to read for us this morning, or this afternoon, from Revelation 21, 1 through 7, and 22, verse 17. The word of the Lord reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Verse 17, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. There are a couple of things that are important to remember that I just want to highlight as you prepare to share these vows together before your family and friends. Two things, particularly from this passage, really help us capture the joy and glory of this moment. The sense of newness. The first one is this, that marriage in this passage points us back to the goodness and grace of God in creation. In the passage we, we read, we hear about a new heaven and a new earth. In many ways, a glorious new beginning. But it's presented in words and categories that God created when in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. And here it's new heavens and new earth. When he finished creating, of course, he looks at Adam and he says, it's not good for you to be alone. And he created Eve and brought them together in the first wedding ceremony and first marriage. All of this is happening before sin enters into the world. It's a part of God's good gift and grace designed for us to become mature image bearers as he brings us together. Even with the introduction of sin into the world, and maybe even more so now, it, remind, it remains as a reminder of the good grace of God. That, that, that we have been created here to celebrate and today we've joined in the sight of these witnesses to witness the grace from God that reminds us that he knows exactly what we need to thrive and to flourish. Practically, for what we're celebrating, that means that now your individual flourishing is linked to the flourishing of your union together. God has said it's not good for man to be alone and through the marriage covenant, he brings you together and says it's not good for you to be alone. So for you to flourish, you must yourselves help one another flourish. You'll never be able to take credit for your successes on your own again. God's gift and grace will sculpt and create in you together new capacities and realities that weren't previously there as you will fulfill uh, and struggle to fulfill these new callings as husband and wife. God creates something new. It also means that you'll have to work together to receive one another as a gift of God's grace, to recognize that. There will be times that the challenges of marriage feel like they will break you. But in Christ, they are fashioning and refining you. God created marriage for your maturity to be formed as you bear his image. And so it reminds us of the grace of God in creation. But the other thing that it does is marriage points us forward to the resurrection. Maybe those of us gathered haven't thought about this recently. But the promise of Revelation 21 is the promise of ultimate eternal life and union with God. Only pictured 
and marriages that are temporary. He dwells with us and we will dwell with him. It's a promise that we await the fullness of. If we pay close attention, we really come to understand that marriage as it is now is an important but still incomplete and dim picture of the wonderful reality of God's promises for us in the gospel. When I say that marriage points us forward to the resurrection, I mean, first of all, that it reminds us that nothing short of God's redeeming work in our lives completed in us in the new creation will ever be able to provide the deep satisfaction we truly long for. Nothing short of that. Marriage reminds us of this. While being a deep and wonderful grace from God, it buckles under the weight of our demands when we elevate the relationship to the place of securing our ultimate hope. Keep your hope firmly planted in the promise of redemption and you will find yourself able to enjoy the grace and kindness of God in marriage. So practically, that means that you're going to experience disappointments together. Part of what we do when we draw together in marriage is we share in the disappointments that come. There will be moments where marriage isn't all that it, you hoped it would be. My wife would be happy to provide a list of all the possible ways. <laughs> and in that moment, you'll need to look to the hope provided through Christ on the cross. It's a hope that leads to our sin being covered and the promise of the resurrection extended to each one of us. You'll need to visit this hope often as you seek and you offer forgiveness. You'll need to let marriage create in you a holy longing for the day when its picture is fulfilled in the new creation. Until then, you join the spirit and the church in extending the hope that is rooted in Christ and given in the invitation we read about. Life will leave you with a thirst for living water. But through Jesus Christ, who thirsted on the cross and was poured out unto death, we can now offer the invitation to those who thirst to come. All who are thirsty, come. Come to the wedding feast that he has prepared, where we will find all that we need without a price to pay, because Jesus has purchased it with his blood. And today, as we gather, I know it's your heart and our desire to encourage you as you pursue this, may your marriage tell that story of the good news of the gospel over and over again. And so we've come to the time in the service and we're going to exchange vows. And that's what these vows are really about. So, Matt, are you ready for this? Absolutely. All right. Let's get some rings. I, Matt, take you, Victoria. I, Matt, take you, Victoria. To be my wife. To be my wife. In the sight of God and all others. In the sight of God and all others. To display and promote the gospel. To display and promote the gospel. And to serve you in love and grace. And to serve you in love and grace. I promise to remain faithful to you. I promise to remain faithful to you. To pursue you without ceasing. To pursue you without ceasing. To give myself up for your good. To give myself up for your good. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In poverty and in wealth. In poverty and in wealth. In times of joy. In times of joy. And in times of sorrow. And in times of sorrow. Until death brings our separation. Until death brings our separation. I give you this ring as a symbol. I give you this ring as a symbol. Of my lifelong faithfulness. Of my lifelong faithfulness. Victoria, if you'll take the ring and place it on Matt's finger. Repeat after me. I, Victoria, take you, Matt. I, Victoria, take you, Matt. To be my husband. To be my husband. In the sight of God and all others. In the sight of God and all others. To display and promote the gospel. To display and promote the gospel. And to serve you in love and grace. And to serve you in love and grace. I promise to remain faithful to you. I promise to remain faithful to you. To pursue you without ceasing. To pursue you without ceasing. To give myself up for your good. To give myself up for your good. In sickness and in health. 
in sickness and in health. In poverty and in wealth. In poverty and in wealth. In times of joy and in times of sorrow. In times of joy and in times of sorrow. Until death brings our separation. Until death brings our separation. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my lifelong faithfulness. As a symbol of my lifelong faithfulness. Matt and Victoria have chosen to commemorate this moment by a tie, the tying of a rope that represents the bringing together of their lives. So may our appearance here today, not only before these witnesses, but also in the sight of God, be a constant reminder that he must be first in your home. And for this reason, let us enter into a time of prayer for blessing and strength upon your vows. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of mercy. We thank you for the grace that has been extended over our lives through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray now, Lord, for Matt and Victoria, that you would strengthen them and encourage them day by day as they seek to bring these vows into reality in their relationship. I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would grant them the ability to nourish and care for one another, to strengthen one another, to be compassionate toward one another, to be kind and tender-hearted, to learn to forgive. And Lord, that you would cause their lives to overflow with the joy of your love. Lord, we thank you for the reminder of your hope that strengthens us for even the most challenging of tasks that we face in life. And Lord, that we have a sure and steady hope to lean on and rely upon. God, we thank you for moments of joy. This is such a joyful occasion that remind us, Lord, that your mercies are new day by day. That we can come and rejoice and begin in fresh ways with you. 
And Lord, I pray that that sort of gospel hope would give strength to their marriage day by day. And that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Matt and Victoria, having consented now together to enter willingly and joyfully into this sacred union of marriage, it's my privilege before God and these witnesses here today to pronounce you husband and wife. What therefore God has joined together, let no one separate. Matt, you may kiss your bride. my privilege to introduce to you for the first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Garrett Dyke. Go and God's